No wonder you are confused. Look at this. RTX 4070, 4070 Super, 4070 Ti, and 4070 Ti Super. So which one of these 4070s is the best and is there actually a difference and how much is the difference as a crater? And there is a little surprise because one of these 4070s is actually undercover 4080. Let me show you what I mean. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10 but you can upgraded to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. Firstly, if you want an undercover GPU with no RGB, check out the Palit 4070Ti Jetstream Super or the Jetstream version because it's just all black no RGB. It's pretty, pretty cool. So I think this is the first time where we have four 4070s on desktop. There's never been that many 4070s and it might be confusing. What are some of the names and what does it mean? So here we're going to explain everything. Firstly, we're going to look at the specs and you can see here on the specs that everything looks very, very similar. The 4070 Super is slightly better than the 4070. Then comes 4070 Ti and then we have the Ti Super. So Super has a lower kind of performance meaning than a Ti. Well, actually that doesn't make sense, does it? First, the GPU becomes a Ti and then Nvidia might add a Ti Super. So the Super comes afterwards than the Ti. So if you know that there is a Ti and Super, then you know that the Super has come afterwards. So firstly, we'll see that one of these GPUs is actually an undercover 4080. As you can see, all of the GPU actual chips or dies are AD104 apart from the TI Super. The TI Super is actually a cut down version of the 4080 because the 4080 is an AD103 die, which means Nvidia probably didn't sell enough 4080s or they just lowered the cost of 4080, but because they had loads of 4080 dies left, they either cut them down, so they might be either, you know, 4080 defect ones where they had to disable some of the cores, it's called binning process, or they actually just took the 4080 die that they couldn't sell at 4080 price point and made them into 4070 Ti Super, which means they just in software basically disabled some of the cores and some of the features of the 4080 and it becomes a 4070 Ti Super and voila here it is, which is interesting isn't it? Slowly you can see that all the core counts slightly have gone higher as well as the L2 cache and if you look at the L2 cache the 4070 Ti Super has the same amount as the 4080 which is interesting again and here we can see oh it is a 4080 but just a little bit of a cut down version the ti super is the only one that has 16 gigabytes of vram compared to the 12 on the other ones and all the other ones have a 192 bit memory bus whereas the ti super has a 256 which is also the same on the 4080 Ooh la la the tdp slightly increases except the ti and ti super share 285 watt TDP. The one thing you've got to note in here is that the 4070 Ti is not produced anymore. The rest of them are. So the supers usually just kicked out all of the other ones, you know, non super versions, apart from the 4070 and 4070 Super, which still will be produced both of them together. Apparently, the 4070 die is very good yield, and as you can see, they can get, you know, higher core counts in there as well. Now then, if you do want to pick up any of these GPUs or check out my test bench setup, I'm going to leave the link in the description below where you can, you know, find them and click on them and see which ones I'm using and, you know, find some more information. Also, if you do want to get some specific build requests or build questions answered to you, check out Minect app um, there and 100% response rate. So if you can't get me on DMs or whatever on social emails, then I always get back to Minect messages so you can reach out to me over there. First, let's take a look at Geekbench 6 GPU benchmarks and here you can see how these GPUs slowly increase in performance. The Super is about 7 to 9 percent faster than the non-Super, then the Ti is about 21 to 25 percent faster than the 4070 and then the Ti Super 
is about 26 to 28 percent faster than the 4070. So here you can see that the TI and TI Super don't have that big of a difference, only a few percent there, but the Super and TI have quite a big difference. Let's take a look at some actual applications and benchmarks in there. Puget Bench 0.9, 3.7, Photoshop 25.0. You can see that here there is not that much difference between all of these cards. The maximum difference is 2.2, which is the 4070 and 4070 Super. In fact, the Super card is faster than the TI and TI Super, which is interesting. And this just shows that if you're doing Photoshop, really none of these cars make sense for you and perhaps you want to look for something more affordable and actually better for example check out arc a770 if you want to at half the price and even faster for photoshop in lightroom classic you might see some performance gains or loses there but it's not so gpu dependent application and most likely you're going to be cpu or ram bottlenecked in lightroom classic so we're going to skip that benchmark because all the gpus perform within margin of error in lightroom classic but video editing here's where things get interesting in premiere pro so this is 23.6 with puget bench 0.98 you can see that all of those cards kind of perform similar the 4070 Super, interestingly, is actually faster than the 4070 Ti, which shouldn't actually happen that way. But that just shows that there is a margin of error that kind of works with these. And it's interesting, the Supers might be better option than the 4070 Ti. And the Ti Super is about 6 to 6.4% 6 faster overall than the 4070, which actually isn't that much at all and if you look at the price point the ti super might not make sense to you at all and if you dive a little bit deeper in there you can see that the long gop intra frame and raw scores are very very similar with all of these gpus they perform within almost within margin of error in all of them the only real difference that you can see here is the gpu effects extended and standard scores where the higher we go the better the gpu score except that the super and ti are very very similar in their standard gpu effects score extended is a little bit faster on the ti but that's the only difference there which basically means that all of those media engine kind of encoding or decoding work exactly the same in Premiere Pro. So the way they utilize the media engines, they're very, very similar with all of them. And perhaps for Premiere Pro, the 4070 Super or TI, they might not be worth it. There is one thing to consider here though, which is the VRAM capacity. And in Premiere Pro, you this benchmark, for example, doesn't clip the VRAM capacity. So you're completely fine with 12 or eight even, well, slightly more than eight, this benchmark uses. The 16 gigabytes of VRAM might be very, very important for you if your timeline gets a little bit more complex and using more than 4K resolution and things like that. So that is the one to consider. And as you can see, you might actually get more performance in there when using GPU effects, either standard or extended scores. But generally, 4070, 4070 Super and TI, they're pretty much the same in Premiere Pro. Moving on to After Effects, as you can see, very similar kind of results. You're most likely CPU or RAM bottlenecked in After Effects, and you can see that the GPU doesn't add so much. The TI Super has an advantage of more VRAM, which might be a bit you know, interesting for you, but generally that's uh, what happens there. There's not that much difference. Interesting, the Super is faster than the TI, Again, very similar performance, what we see on the previous application. But both Premiere Pro and After Effects don't utilize GPU as much, and most likely your CPU bottlenecked in there. But DaVinci Resolve does. And here, Puget Bench 0.93.1, in DaVinci Resolve 18.6, you can see we're actually getting quite a big increase as we move on with the GPUs. And DaVinci Resolve loves to use a lot of GPUs. The 4070 Super is about 5.7 to 7% faster than the 4070. The 4070 Ti is another extra few percent faster, up to 8.9% faster than the 4070. And then the Ti Super is another few percent faster, 9.75 to 11.6% faster compared to the 4070. And here having more RAM really does matter. And as you can see, 
in the GPU effects scores, the TI Super has probably the biggest increase between the previous model compared to the 4070 Super is quite a bit faster than the 4070 as well. But as you can see in DaVinci Resolve, you can get measurable increase as you go higher. But is the TI Super about 12% more expensive than the 4070? Probably not. The more benefit you're going to get with the TI Super is again the VRAM capacity where if you're doing more, you know, complex kind of timeline and if you're using a 3080 for example that has only 10 gigabytes of VRAM, the TI Super might be a much better option to get in a DaVinci Resolve. Now, said all that and compared all the 4070s in DaVinci Resolve, the card that you might actually want to pick up if you're using one of the older 10 or 20 series cards is a 3090. You can get a 3090 used at less of a price point than the TI Super 4070 and it is actually slightly faster than the TI Super as well. If you don't know what I mean, I highly recommend checking out all the GPUs compared video and there you can see all of the same results because I'm using exactly the same version of the benchmarks. All the GPUs in there are comparable with what you see in here, as well as the individual uh, results or reviews of each of these GPUs where I'm comparing the individual review with AMD and perhaps some of the Intel equivalents. So you'll see, should you go even AMD or should you go Intel? But now moving on to 3D, Here's where things start to get most different and here's where we see, oh, I can, ah, this is what's happening. So firstly, V-Ray, we can see that the 70 Super is 19 to 20% faster than the 70. That's quite a bit. And then the TI compared to the Super is only a few percent faster, about 3% max faster than the Super. So the TI perhaps is not worth it and that's the one that is not produced anymore either. You might still find them on sale, but don't fall into the trap if that is priced as much as the TI Super. Don't get that one because as you can see, the 4070 Super might be a better option for you at the price point, if that makes sense. The TI Super is extra 20% plus um, faster than the Super and the TI or extra 38 to 45% faster than the 4070, which is a huge, huge uh, leap now in performance. Moving on to Blender, here we can see that the Super is about up to 5.3% faster than the non-Super. The TI is quite a bit faster now than the 4070, about 19 to 25% faster which means that the Super and TI, there is about a 20% increase. And the TI Super is about 35 to 38% faster in Monster Junk Shop and Classroom Scenes. Between the TI and TI Super, there is roughly about 10 to 15% performance increase, but this Blender benchmark doesn't actually fully saturate the VRAM capacity, so we don't really see the benefit of TI Super compared to the TI or all of the other ones. But in Octane Bench and Redshift, we can. In Octane Bench, we can see that the Super is about 10 to 11% faster than the non Super. The TI gives us extra 5% compared to the Super, and the TI Super gives us extra 20% compared to the TI, or about 35.7% faster than the 4070, which is quite a big increase now in performance. And perhaps the price point in 3D really starts to make sense. So if you're doing 3D work, you can see that the price kind of makes sense. In Redshift, Redshift just fully saturates all the VRAM capacity you have. Even if you have 24 gigabytes, it's all gonna go for Redshift. and here you can see that the 4070 Super, which has the same VRAM as non-Super, is only about 5.6% faster. The TI, which has the same VRAM capacity, is extra 8% faster than the Super, or about 13.56% faster than the 4070. But the TI Super here, you can see why it is actually a 4080 in disguise, is 37.3% faster than the 4070, which is extra 25% faster than the TI. You can see that's a huge performance increase because we have the extra VRAM buffer there. In terms of power drop, we do start to increase the power as we get higher. The 4070 is about 200 watts. The 4070 Super is extra 10%, about 220. The 4070 Ti does increase it now quite a lot to 285, but the Ti Super uses the same 
wattage as the TEI at 285 watts power draw. So then, which one of these GPUs should you be getting? Any one of these 4070s or 4070 Ti Supers, which is actually... 4080. It depends on what is your actual application, what you're doing. In photo editing, just forget all of them. Not for you, really. Get any one of these, you'll be completely fine. In video editing, things start to get a little bit more interesting. Now, what I recommend is if you are very serious video editing and you're doing it as a job and uh, whatever you know GPU you're currently using try to install hardware info 64 and see if you're capping your current GPU VRAM buffer if you do cap your 8 or 10 or 12 gigabytes then the TI super is actually a good option to go because this is not far from the 4080 go have a look at the 4080 review and you'll see and we're getting this at a much lower price point than the 4080 and for a video editor that's really really good the 16 gigabytes of vram and nvidia drivers that's good especially if you do a little bit of 3d inside because the 3d performance on nvidia gpus is absolutely insane if you're using davinci resolve the thing is the same the vram capacity actually is very very important for you because if you cap in at that the whole thing might be sluggish even though your gpu might have more power but just because the vram is capped there is you know kind of a bottleneck in your system but at that point at this price point for davinci resolve you might actually want to check out the 7900 xd because the newer drivers it's much more stable now and a lot more better than what it used to be a year and even over a year ago it might be a better option for davinci resolve because we get even more vram capacity extra four gigabytes compared to this one for 3d I think this is where the TI Super really stretches its legs and the price point actually does make sense. So if you do in Blender, V-Ray, Octane Bench, Redshift, whatever 3D software, these GPUs are all very, very good. I'd say from 4070, there's really no point in upgrading to 4070 Ti or 4070 Super. Obviously, you see what the price point there is. If you're using 3D, go from 4070 to 4070 Ti Super because you do get quite a bit increase in there up to 37 percent which is quite nice and neither amd nor intel have any competition in 3d for these guys in here so if you do in 3d it might make sense so if you did find this video helpful there's some more things in the video description below if you've never built yourself a pc if you're a creator videographer then check out the best bank for buck creator pc build guide in the description below there's a video for you whatever your budget is you'll see it all down there and uh, if you do have any other questions you can reach out in the next and i'll see you next time thanks guys for watching bye bye